On today's episode of Lone Wolf Chat, I want to talk about writing conferences and if they're still relevant in 2022. Now, for years, we've had writing conferences. It's a place to meet and greet with other writers. It's a place to meet agents, to help learn how to write your query, um, to just get a general sense of community with other writers. But for the last two years, a lot of us have been isolated thanks to the COVID-19 virus, and we're still continuing to isolate. And the question is, is if writing conferences are really as relevant as they were back, you know, back years ago. Um, My personal experience is with the Philadelphia Writers Conference, where I live on the East Coast. So there's only so many conferences I can go to that's within my budget, but the Philadelphia Writers Conference, you know, I could just catch a train to get there. I don't live too far from the, from the Philly metro area. Technically, I'm considered in the Philly metro area. I don't want to dox myself, but I'm in that. Let's just say I can get to uh, Center City by train and it won't take me that long. Um, the convention itself or the conference, I should say, sometimes I call it a convention because um, it feels like a convention. But the conference itself takes place um I believe in Old City. I believe that's what we call it. You know, sometimes I get my brain gets foggy because certain parts of Philly, they keep changing the freaking names for gentrification purposes. But that's not what this episode's about, so I digress. Um, so basically, for purposes, let's say we go to a hotel and we have this conference. You pay for um, the classes, the the um, writers, the shows up to do the speeches. Um I had a great experience for the most part at this particular conference, but I noticed some things about this particular, and just to let you know, I'm not bashing this particular convent, uh, conference. It's more of a, just a general thought process I've been going through for the last two years about writing conferences in general. I know not all writing conferences are the same. Um, one of my goals in life is to go to a Romance Writers Conference of America, hopefully either in New York. I know there's one in D.C., but I probably can't financially go this year. So unless they have the online version, I'm probably going to skip it out. Um, but back to that story. The conference I go to, a lot of the people who go to these conferences I know are older than me. Like I'm 34 and we have people in their 50s and 60s who are still going to conferences. And the information given isn't always for younger people or people who are social media friendly. Now, here's the thing. I have seen that the conference goers, you know, the people who run the conferences have decided to at least have one, like the last time I went was in 2019, was have someone who was an expert or good with social media as well as writing books, has um, talked about, you know, promoting her writing on social media and how relevant it is to keep a website, how to get a rep administrator. But the thing was, that was the first time I've ever seen that many young people come to this conference in such a large number and people of color. And the growing factor as we were all sitting and talking, eating lunch and whatever, um, one of the talking points was, is it still real, you know, is this really for us? Like, they had a panel at the end of the conference. You know, I was one of the few people I've gone many years. And they're trying to get feedback on how to make the writing conference more relevant. And one of the things young people said is there's stuff here that's not really relevant for us. When I go, I want to be, you know, go to a fantasy conference. I want to go to erotic conference. I want to go to places for romance. But the, the, the conference I went to was more, it's, it's very broad in general. So we have like a lot of people who do newspaper, people who do magazines, people who do poetry, manuscripts, non-fiction uh, writing, or they do um, mystery or slash thriller and how they get their resources. I mean, to be honest, it, the, pre, the final year I went, which was in 2019, I did enjoy myself because they had two um, romance writers who are part of Romance Writers of America. And I didn't realize it was such a big thing. And you think I would know but I didn't. And it made me more invigorated to write more on the romance side of my fantasy book, um, which I'm working on uh, draft two um, outlining currently. And the whole time, like when they gave those, you know, the final panel, a lot of us young people said it was not relevant enough for us to really want to stay. That was the first thing. The second thing was there's not enough relevancy for us young folk. 
and I also pointed out that the 300, the, the, the conference itself is $300 in total to go. That's not including the ticket I pay for the weekend pass to get on the train. It doesn't include food. It does include, let's say you had to stay at a hotel or if you, um, um, or if I'm trying to think if you had to uh, also pay for a plane ticket, Philadelphia itself, Philly, as I know it, is very expensive the closer you get to Center City. And where we were having the conference is close to Center City. So you have that factor in mind. You also have other factors such as um, if you, you know, do you bring food to the conference? Uh, most hotels won't let you really bring outside, like, depending on the, on the hotel, because they have their own restaurant, they really don't like you bringing outside food. They rather you bring in their own, you know, buy from their restaurant and their restaurant's expensive. The bar I went to was really cool. But there were so many little caveats in there that we, as young people thought were missing or people of color thought were missing. It was great to have a black poet, but what about a black, black fantasy writer? What about erotica? Like, it's almost like it wasn't branched out enough. That's how a lot of us felt. Again, I am not crapping on the conference. I'm just stating my experience at that conference. And when I went home, oh, and the other thing, you can meet literary, you can meet agents, you can meet, like everybody keeps their cards. I still have the cards from the last time I went to the conference. So you do network, but um, there are some stuff that some people think are missing. Now, when I went home, um, I told my husband about the forum and he said, well, you know, $300 is a lot of money. For a conference now my husband's not a writer he's not in the writing business so you know i had to take what he said with a grain of salt but the price is pretty expensive to go i understand somewhat why it's expensive but then i don't understand at the same time because certain things um now it's 300 dollars is like the base and that's not paying for the master class and yes there is a master class that goes with um this particular conference where you do like that or one-on-one -on -one for the writer that you want to talk, talk with who works in your genre if they can critique your draft it's a lot of other things now i have a friend he is published and he pointed out to me why would you spend 300 dollars for a writing conference that's a ripoff when you could go to the community college and go to a writing workshop that spends uh that costs less money now i thought about this for a second i said hmm I went online to my local community college and the writing classes were only like 180 for six weeks worth of content, uh, web, you know, web, uh, web classes. I'm like, well, geez, that's, a, that's pretty cheap. But at the same time, you don't get the same connections that you would at a writing conference or the chance to branch out and meet other writers on your own. So there is a caveat and a downside to it. Now, all that's being said, the reason why mostly I found out about the Philadelphia Writers Conference was because um, of Writers Digest. Was it Writers Digest? Yeah, it was Writers Digest. It's a um, magazine where they have a lot of articles. I haven't subscribed to them about three years now because, to be honest, a lot of those articles I don't. It's gotten to the point where you can kind of tell they're redundant and there's no point in putting it in. Now, the good thing is um, they do promote writers, but not a lot of writers. And Writer Digest itself is a freaking franchise. I mean, they have their own books. They have their own um, classes and everything else. So that's how I found out about uh, writers, um, the Philadelphia Writers Conference. Now, the question I'm posing is, are writers conferences... Uh, relevant for 2022 and it, it took a lot of thought before I gave my answer before I give my answer because I don't want to say don't go to a writing conference like if you've never written a book before if you've never um experienced it I would at least put an experience in but for me I don't know like unless the people who do this particular writer conference or other writer conferences or if I get money to go to the romance writers of America I'm probably gonna stay home now I do want to say before I give also before I give my answer um I have seen um the like the Philadelphia writers conference they did try to do a webinar version with the same price so take that as you will but they did try to do their own um you know, online courses or online chatting or online conferences. The problem is I don't think a lot of people signed up and I was on the fence about it only because I knew um, I had to 
rearrange my budget around. But they ended up canceling it because there weren't enough attendees. So fast forward to 2022. The 2020, they said they were going to cancel because they wanted to revamp their product or uh, revamp their conference. 2021, they did the online thing. And now we're in 2022. Admittedly, it's still January. But usually closer towards February, I would have gotten an update or a tweet or something about the conference. And it's been like radio silent. So, I haven't checked their Facebook in a while. I'm probably going to check their Facebook page. But I haven't heard anything about what they're going to do. Now, on the flip side, something like Romance Writers of America I found out last year, they did online conferencing, which is a great idea. Because, unfortunately, the, the Ro Miss Rona is still out there. Still causing havoc. Still mutating. And until we get this um, virus under control um i have to take precautions um we all have to take precautions with our health especially someone like me who is supposedly morbidly obese according to the doctor and has a and i have asthma i can't afford to take any chances and a lot of and a lot of people are in my situation not just with asthma a lot of people can't take the um risk of exposing themselves to the virus so having the conference online is a great opportunity but my only question is um are they going to still charge you an arm and a leg for the same prices if you were there some places like the aforementioned um romance writers of america they have lowered their prices to make it more relevant um also you have something like uh what was it the philadelphia writers workshop which is different than the writers conference it looks like um it's about the same thing but um they do more workshops than they do conferences like lectures and um they actually are offering a cheaper price but it's not as cheap as i would like it i was hoping it would be maybe it's because they have to go to the venue maybe they have to pay more money for uh the people to speak or do classes i'm not sure but i know it's gonna cost a little more this year so or a little less but not enough where i want to come out of pocket for so there are all these debates um there are plenty of videos on youtube whose people have had experiences with conferences um and you you can always do your own research on if you know about writers conferences and uh, people have prep bags when they go and how they're going to approach people and what they're going to do now my final conclusion towards writer conferences should you go if you are a newbie writer, yes, you should go because you want the experience of being around, meeting other people and other writers in your community because you never know who you're going to meet in a writer's conference. You don't know if this person's going to uh, lift you up. You'd be surprised. Like a lot of writers are like super supportive of each other. You rarely will find somebody who's just an awful person. Most of the time they're like friendly. Um, I haven't really found anybody who's like god awful some people are standoffish like um but i understand why some people are standoffish because if you're someone like let's say um hmm i'm gonna use let's say you're someone like brian sanders um uh why can't I say his name, Brian Sanderson? I keep saying his name is Brian Sanderson and his name is Brandon Sanderson. He's actually had an experience where an Uber fan like just like like was super excited and it weirded him out. So people like him who are like super famous, I understand why they want to be kind of be able to go shopping without them being um, mobbed by other people. You know, you kind of have to, you can't just, let's say your favorite writer is at this conference um, and you're going to see them. I think the last thing they want is you like jumping in their face like oh my god i'm an uber i'm like a uber fan of yours oh my gosh oh my gosh they really i can tell you you know i bet you a lot of them are like okay you're at a 10 and i need you to bring this down to a six i bet you that's how they react and it's not that i think they don't want you there it's like they just want you to bring it down a notch they probably deal with a lot of stuff and, you know, you being oversight is probably something that freaks them out. And a lot of writers are introverts. They don't really want to go anywhere and interact with people. So you being like super happy sometimes could freak them out. But you still, 
I still want to encourage you guys to have your own experience and go to writer conferences, you know, if, if that's your thing. Um, now, it, are writer conferences relevant in 2022? Well, I can safely say that it is up to the person's experience. For me, it was, and I think for me personally, right now in my stage of my writer's uh, life, I got what I needed for now. I might still go back because eventually I'm probably going to want to meet an agent, even though I'm self-publishing, to get advice. Because a lot of agents deal with um, people who probably self-publish or go through a traditional publisher. But for now... Um, I don't know if I'm going to jump on the bandwagon to go to a writer's conference anytime soon, only because of Miss Rona. And also, I don't know if I'm going to get more benefits from, like, unless there are, like, different types of um, speakers coming to the particular one I like going to, I might skip it. But that's why I say it's up to someone's interpretation. It's up to your, your judgment. It's your call if you want to go or not. I went for the experience and I did enjoy the experience and it also probably didn't help that or it, I want to say didn't it probably helped that like the week we did that was the same week as the uh, pride parade so during lunchtime you got a glimpse of the parade coming through like on your way to getting something to eat so there was that um so there are experiences you have and there's people you meet like I met um a really nice woman she um she um is doing a fantasy book and she um we had pizza and all the stuff and she invited me up to her hotel room and it was a cool experience um so like i said like it's up to you if you want to go or not i'm encouraging you guys if you guys are like new to the writing game or whatever i would go to the conference but for right now for me personally i'm gonna stay in the house because i can't afford to get sick as much much as i hate isolating myself like i'm a weird writer because I enjoy being around people for a time. And then like after a while, I'm like, I'm tired. I'm going back in the house. I have like, I have like, I swear my body goes through these weird shifts where it's like, I want, I need to be around people. And then the next minute I'm like, eh, I'm going back in the house. I don't want to talk to you anymore. So that's why, you know, I'm probably, I'm, I'm, I'm more, a little more sociable than a lot of writers apparently are. That's what some people have told me. I, I'll take that with a grain of salt, you know, but anyway, like I'm saying, if you want to go to a writer's conference, what I would do is do your research before even signing up for one, just in case, you know, the people you're going with, I'm sorry, just in case, you know, or check for reviews. The best option you can possibly do is to check for reviews. See if, um, see if those work for you. See if you really, um, enjoy or take people's reviews. Some people will tell you if it was a bad review. Um, of a conference or a con they went to. I mean, for goodness sake, you can look up DashCon and that that entire mess um, will pretty much discourage people from... I mean, it's not so much just discouraging people going. Um, it's like a cautionary tale of what you should and should not do when you go to a conference. It's a cautionary tale of what you should and should not spend your money on. So if you're going to go to a writer's conference, if you have... If you know anybody or if you can go online, I would look at experience like reviews before going. But I always encourage you guys to go to a conference so you can get the experience for yourself. So um that's the end of the episode. I'd like to thank you guys for listening. Um now if you haven't noticed my um website Lone Wolf Chat is a little bit murky. It's a little bit old, needs a little bit of facelift. I'm working on it. <laughs> That's one of my goals for this year um, in 2022 is to hopefully get my website a little more relevant. Um, if not, you know, I'm going to have somebody redo it myself or have somebody redo it um, for me because I'm not a web person. I probably, you know, it doesn't work for me. As long as you can teach me how to post, I'm good. But all that designing, all that background, all that glitter and stuff, I'm not going to know how to do that. But that's the end of the episode. Thank you for listening. And I will check chat with you guys again soon in the next episode.